beautiful clear water, blue skies, attractive towns with narrow picturesque streets, and ancient historical sites. This is what the Sporades Islands in Greece provide. In the Sporades archipelago to the north of the country, we visited the islands of Skiathos and Skopelos. Visiting Skiathos Island first, from a restaurant with a panoramic view, we can see the airport, the harbor, and the main town of Skiathos. Fifteen years ago when I visited it on a sailboat, it was not as busy as it is now. Our delightful hotel was situated at the west end of the harbor. It is a bit of a climb down, but from this point at the end of the harbor, we can see our hotel. Our veranda in the hotel is indicated with the arrow. We had a great view from our veranda. And also from the pleasant breakfast garden on the lower level. The steps were gentle, but there were lots of them. We wandered back through the narrow streets with shops and with tavernas that have their tables out on the walkways. Eventually we found the central square with the cathedral church of the three bishops. Our hotel is located behind this sculpture. The harbor front is crowded with restaurants. A drink or a meal down by the harbor was an easy way to recharge our batteries. The Burtzi Fort was located on this island sticking out into the harbor. It was a Venetian style fort built by the Gizi brothers who captured the island in 1207. It was ineffective in protecting the population and in mid 14th century the inhabitants moved the capital to the Castro, a site we will see later. But now there is an agreeable cafe with a welcome breeze off the water. I was impressed to see these marble curbs on the streets. Our hotel also had marble floors, stairs and bathrooms. The windmill restaurant in the highest point of the town provided the best meals of our trip. It is run by the same Scottish lady as when I was there 15 years previously. view of the harbor and town is the best available too, where you can watch the airplanes come in low over the harbor to land.
As evening falls, the town lights up and the action begins for the younger folk. We were usually tired and went back to bed. The Castro on the north tip of the island has a long history. It was to this natural defensive location that the inhabitants of the island moved in the 14th century to protect themselves from pirates. The castle was ruled by the Byzantines and then by Venetians until 1538. From 1538 until 1821, Castro was under Turkish rule, i.e. the Ottoman Islamic Empire. The castle was no longer necessary with Greek independence in 1830. The access to the Castro was interesting as we drove down what used to be a stone paved walk path. In the Castro, life was very difficult because of continuous pirate and conqueror raids, plus the lack of space inside the fortress. The houses were small and built very close together. Regular tour boats bring people to the beach below. Those with the energy can climb up to the castle. At the entrance was a wooden drawbridge which connected the city with the opposite hill. Under siege, they raised the gate, making access to the Castro impossible for the enemy. Behind the gate is the water tank, which was filled by any of the residents returning to the castle as part of their duty. The mosque was built during the Turkish occupation. It is estimated that in the Castro there were more than 20 churches. In this one, some original frescoes on the wall can be seen. Special holy days are still celebrated in this church. Elsewhere on the island, the Evangelistria Monastery was built by some monks during the post-Byzantine years over the ruins of an ancient monastery. The complex comprises a fine library with rare books, an ecclesiastical museum, and numerous cells. In the center of the courtyard is the monastery church. We return to the town of Skiathos on one of the island's major highways with occasional views of the harbor. And then it was time to catch the fast cat ferry to Skopelos, an hour's sail away. Our ferry ride with a stop at Glossa at the north end of Skopelos was comfortable and similar in style to an aircraft ride. The town of Skopelos is situated like an amphitheater overlooking the harbor. It is a pretty town with restaurants located under the regal shade trees. At the west end of the harbor is the Venetian Castro. Built over an archaic temple of Athena, it successfully resisted the Turks during the War of Independence in the 1820s. 
overlooking both the town and the harbor, we can watch the docking of one of the ferries that I have speeded up a lot. Putting down his bow anchor and backing up to the dock in Mediterranean style. Near our hotel was the oldest of the many churches in town. This one dates from 1548. Leaving from the shopping area located one street away from the harbor, I wandered the convoluted back streets of the town. Taking in the sights. I found this very pretty town to be a little quieter than Skiathos. Now I see why the steps go up the middle of the street. I had to get out of this guy's way. This restaurant that takes up the entire plaza was just a few minutes from our hotel, so I can go back to the hotel from here and take my siesta. The tavernas are open for business and tonight we're taking in one that has some Greek music. The bazooki player on the right is the manager or owner of the restaurant. We took a bus to the town of Glossa at the north end of the island. The town looks down on the port of Lutraki, where our ferry had stopped on our way from Skiathos. I had read about a good restaurant in Glossa, so we went there for lunch. The food was just as good as the view. After our meal, I convinced Rita to walk down the steep path to Lutraki to catch the bus back to Skopelos town. It was a long way, but at least it was downhill. On a couple of other days, we rented a car. Leaving from our hotel, these were considered normal streets for driving. The monasteries are located up in the hills on the other side of the harbor, up some narrow roads, past some hotels on this side of the harbor that are all a long walk from the town. We can see the town on the other side of the harbor from here. This is the Evangelistria Monastery we are headed towards. When we arrive, a little old nun comes out to offer us some of the sweet candy that they make. No photos are permitted, so all I have are these pictures taken with my GoPro camera on top of the car. As we head back down to the intersection to go to the other monasteries, it is possible to see how narrow these roads can be and also Skopelos town on the far side of the harbor. There are a number of hairpin turns on this road. Around this point, Rita was feeling uncomfortable on the right side of the car. It's a long way down if we go over the edge.
We finally get on the road to the other monasteries. It climbs up through some trees. Across the valley, we can see the monastery we just left. Leaving another view of Skopelos town and harbor behind, the next monastery comes in sight, and we can see how serpentine the road is. There is a walk path climbing up from the bottom and going from monastery to monastery. The St. Barbara Monastery has a surprise in wait for us. This little monastery has been bought by a family and is used as their home. The lady of the house invited us to come in and see it. These are the family living quarters behind the lace curtain. The church is still used. Many of the icons in it came from Constantinople in the 14th century, according to our hostess. On another day, we headed off to see the chapel where part of the film Mamma Mia was shot. On the way, we stopped to look at some of the pleasant bays that attract sailors and more beaches. The Mamma Mia Chapel comes in sight on top of that further spire of rock. It's a long climb up. But a lot of other people are doing it, so we have lots of rest while they pass us on the way down. If you have seen the movie, I should warn you at this point that the interior of this chapel was definitely not the one used in the movie. From behind the chapel, we have a great view of the coastline. And in the bay below, the sailboat in a very pleasant anchorage. With our nod to another movie, we must leave the delightful and serene Sporades. I was not disappointed with my return to these islands. They are peaceful and pleasant in every respect. We enjoyed the food the helpful and accommodating hotel and restaurant people. We love the rural feel to these islands. Despite the economic miseries in Athens, none of the problems appear to have come to these islands. The small safe harbors, the quiet winding narrow streets, the monasteries tucked away in the hills were located on rocky spires. All allowed us to feel that we had slipped into another more peaceful dimension.